So we were asked about doing drills under heavy tension. These are things that we covered during a recent seminar and we were asked a follow-up question on that. So whenever you do dynamic tension drills, um, what you're trying to do is turn your kata into something that's more alive. So imagine like a middle block, right? He, uh, his, his hand is straight out. If I just do a middle block here uh, without tension, and I do it and it looks picture perfect because there's no tension, there's no, there's always a give, right? But once he adds a little bit of resistance to it, that middle block has to change, right? Because I can't move his arm. I might need to move my body to create that image or I need to create that image at a different angle. So having tension in the clinch, it forces you to make your movements a little more dynamic. What you're having to do is you're having to like, Magnify what it is you're doing in order to make it work. So what I mean is if I'm trying to, let's say I'm trying to get to Michael's back and I'm trying to get this arm up. If he, if we're practicing this dynamic tension, in order for me to do that, I have to practice really reaching and pushing up really hard and high, right? And I have to get that in order to get this slip to get over the back. Um, it forces you to put your body behind it. Yeah, too. it teaches me also like uh, that. Uh, so I'm, I, the whole movement is not actually me pushing, right? It's actually me dropping at the same time. So I'm pushing up and then I'm I'm dropping with that step. So I'm pushing here, and as this goes up, I drop and then I'm coming up under. So creating that kind of heavy, heavy tension kind of teaches your body to have to do other things under heavy resistance, right? Right. So that's just another way to figure out how you're applying your your blocks and your stripes and things of that nature. Because if Aaron's a lot stronger and bigger than I am, I'm not gonna try to go force and force. But with heavy tension it's gonna allow me to figure out where the where the points of contact where there's less resistance that I can go to, right? Or create that myself. So instead of trying to push into them I can I can give way or I can slip or change the angle where the, the tension point is. Because anytime there's point of contact, it means that there's energy going towards that direction, right? And my energy is going the exact opposite. So if I could figure out a way to adjust his energy, because as his energy is pushing against here, if I could just redirect it under tension, I'm gonna be able to open him up or create a different route for me, my body to go. So the easiest drill to do is, of course, uh, having the human dummy, right? So you can do opposite directions, or you can do figure out a way to open up the person's guard. So Aaron has his arms out here, and this is, again, heavy tension. So it's going to be very different than just trying to, if he relaxes, just trying to open him up and pop in. We're going to start from the clinch, and I'm going to have to figure out a way to move my body to open him up. Notice how I had to put a point of leverage here so I can start creating this open. It's like prying his arms his arms open. And that's something you're never going to see when you're going at a faster speed or you're going at a lower lower uh, tension, right? So these things are going to start coming up. All I'm going to try to do for this drill is try to close the distance under heavy tension and he's just going to maintain a distance for himself. So drill number two is everything is the same, but I'm gonna my goal now is to try to pull his posture down under heavy tension. So his goal is to create that frame, keep me away, and also maintain his, his straight back. That way he doesn't get pulled in front of his toes. Okay, so another thing you can do is you can have your opponent uh, create a lot of tension and what your goal is going to be is to actually pivot to the angles. Uh, here like using, trying to implement your cotton can, can kind of really help you out. So you start like in this kind of clinch range and then my goal is to just pivot to his side. So I'm not going to swim out here like this kind of thing, right, because I'm already here. But I, I, I can drop here and hit it off that way and then you reset. Here and then I come get it. You set it that way, right? And you can start in different in different areas. So I'm here, pivoting to the side, and to the other side. That will look from here and to the side. So what that should look like to you on camera 
is essentially I'm doing like a round block here, right? When I was this way, I was using like a downwards block that way. And you can both do that uh, at the same time, employing your own techniques and looking for openings, right? Uh, it's like really, really heavy uh, technique, right? Kind of drill. Uh, if you were to apply strikes and really uh, there would be like a really kind of slow methodical strike and only one person is really going to be benefiting by uh, developing that touch, that touch sensitivity uh, for defense, right? So if, I'm, if we're doing this drill and I'm on Michael and I'm, I'm going to be the striker, then I might start doing stuff like that so he can start feeling like where, where I'm having to create this in order to in order to punch or to kick, right? Because in order to come off this moment for me to throw an, an attack, I have to create some kind of space, right? It's punching on the inside stuff doesn't always really work all that well. So if we're here, we're under heavy tension, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna show what a kick would be like, then I'm gonna have to like push off in order to throw that kick. So it's very slow, but there's usually only one person who's gonna be attacking if you're doing it that way. Right, generally these drills are very much ukitori, right? It's gonna be hard to do, have both sides doing that because it, it just it just <clears throat> degrades into a mess real quick. Yeah, it starts to degrade into like what a, what a, what a real fights like end up end up looking like, you know, like really. And you want to strike towards that, but you're not gonna be learning that if you're always just right. If you're always doing it that like that, it's, yeah, you're not gonna really get much out of it. It's, it will just uh, degrade too quickly for you to pick up information. And the thing is, like, it's like the whole idea of doing. Uh, repetitive kata, right? So if you think of these drills as repetitive kata, repetitive motion tasks, then uh, when you start doing it more like faster and with less resistance, you know, like more alive, then all that stuff becomes more fluid and becomes a lot easier to do.